Okay guys, we're back at it with the whiteboard series. Um, today we're gonna talk about a, a really, really talked about subject. It, it is knock sensor activity. So obviously I was doing some other stuff, but we're gonna talk about knock sensor activity. Um, Mustangs, especially since I wanna say 2010, um, OEM, they have knock sensors, but they really, really started becoming super useful 11 and up. Coyote Mustangs pretty much changed the game, brought back Ford brought Ford back from the depths of hell <laughs> uh, with their knock sensor, um, twin variable cam timing, twin independent variable cam timing, blah, blah, blah. But today we're gonna concentrate on knock sensor activity. So we tell people that we want the best gas possible, like the best octane possible in your area. If you live in California, you're stuck with 91. If you live um, Carolinas, Louisiana, Texas, for some reason, that fuel is on the sweeter side. Uh, when it comes to Florida, pump gas sucks in Florida, in my opinion. Um, Shell and BP on average have the best fuel. E85, if it's testing 85%, is awesome, ideal. We want that if you have the adequate fuel system. So how can we tell the car is experiencing actual knock in the data log? So wide open throttle, right? When we look at a data log, throttle, okay? ETC, electronic throttle control. When you go wide open throttle in a data log, it looks like this, flat. And this angle is about 85. And again, this is degrees, not percent, degrees. When the throttle opens, okay? Think about it in degrees. This is 90 degrees, so the throttle is about this. If you say, well, Alex, I want my throttle to go 100%, so you want, you want the thing to basically shut again? It's a blade, <laughs> so you want it to shut again? So 85 degrees flat, oh, you know, we're looking at a round throttle body from this angle, let's say, and you know, let's say this is the side view of a throttle body, side view, and the blade it, at 90 degrees would be like that, right? If this is a throttle body, and this is the blade, this would be 90 degrees, so it's slightly under that. So, just explaining throttle, because you guys think it should be 100%, which we laugh about that all the time. So RPM, in the data log, when we ask for a data log, we say, give me a watt pull. After idle and slow revs, make sure fueling is good, we say, give me a watt pull. So RPM usually looks like this. You kind of creep into it, then you go whoop, and then this is wide open throttle, okay? And then we say let off and we're good. And this is what we see. Throttle's good. It's not being interrupted by traction control. It's not doing anything weird. Okay, so the knock sensor, the knock sensor is always adding timing or taking timing away via uh, the knock reading. So when you have positive knock, it's bad. Negative knock, means it's negative, it's good, so it's adding timing. So when you graph the knock line and it has no knock activity, and let's say this is negative and this is positive on the knock scale, well, th let's say this is zero, this is five, and this is five on the negative. And the, the, the knock sensor does this, and it adds timing, okay? negative knock. At wide open throttle, negative knock, right? It's going towards the negative, it's at zero, going towards the negative. No issue, we feel that the fuel is adequate in your area. Of course, the opposite is if it does this, and it usually kind of creeps in like this, it kind of does it like in a staircase. If it starts to knock, with RPM going up, we say, bro, this is an octane issue or your cylinders are slapping against the bore. Who knows? But we say, your knock sensors are active. Can you please do us a favor and get us uh, logs with octane booster in the tank? Why do we do that? Because we wanna make sure that if it is an octane issue, that it immediately recognizes it. So a lot of people go out there after having a positive knock on a data log and they get us logs with octane booster in the tank after having positive knock and then you see the sucker go i mean it, it adds all the timing if you look at the timing graph 
it's actually going up, but we're not going to add that yet because that's going to confuse you. So it's going negative knock with octane booster. Octane booster. Okay. So now I go, you have an octane issue. Your area has bad octane. Where'd you get the gas? Well, I got it at Walmart. Why do you have an 11 to 1 compression or 12 to 1 compression coyote with Walmart gas? Let's, don't get me started on that. Okay, so octane issue, go to another gas station like a Shell, a busy Shell that has a lot of turnover or a BP, British Petroleum, that has a lot of turnover and all of a sudden their knock issues are gone, they're happy, things are good. So how do I know that the knock sensor reading is false? Well. This isn't an exact science, but let me say that the car on a watt log was fine. So we're gonna go back to um, knock sensor. Let's say knock sensor zero. I should have just left that alone. Five, five, negative, positive. And we're gonna, let's say the knock sensor when you go wide open throttle is flat. And your car's seeing about 22 degrees or so and it's not not really an issue you know it's just kind of like not moving and i'm like huh interesting okay so obviously the knock sensor is pretty quiet but what happens when i say okay get me logs with you shifting meaning a one two two three or a 10 r80 or 6 r80 car well the walk log looks like this okay and then if it's false knock it tends to happen on a shift. So the knock uh, sensor reading would look something like this. It's fine, and once it hits a shift, boom, it spikes up to uh, one degree. Then it tries to add it, and then on a shift, it spikes up a little higher, torque converter, and then it starts doing that, and then starts to trail off. So I'm going, wait a minute. On a shift, it's knocking. But on the previous watt log, the knock sensor was happy. So I'm going, okay, let's look at that. Do you have any catch cans in your, in your engine bay? Actually, I do. Why do you say that? Well, on a shift, if you have anything loose in the engine bay and it taps anything, or if the mass airflow sensor is resting on a shield or somewhere that it can rattle, believe it or not, these knock sensors are built to pick up a frequency. And if anything meets that frequency, it's going to set them off. So I go, well, the knock only happens on a shift, but on a watt log, it's happy. So then what happens when I say, do me a favor, look over your engine bay, look over everything, make sure that it's happy and uh, you know, there's nothing's hitting and then come back and they go, oh crap, Alex, a charge pipe was hitting somewhere on a dog's dog. Hey, Tony, could you not, not drink water in the middle of the video? He doesn't care. So let's say he fixes the charge pipe, he fixes the issue, and he gets me another data log. Well, wouldn't you know it? It adds timing, adds timing, adds timing, and it's happy because the knock sensor is going to the negative, meaning there is no knock sensor activity, and it is super, super happy. Now, what setups are more prone to knock issues. I, you know, I hate to say it, but centrifugal and turbo setups are more likely to set off the knock sensor than anything else. Why is that? All the piping. Got charge piping, you got cold side, hot side, the, the, the kit is an on three and you put it on for the third time and you got to go around, you know, the, you got to go around the steering shaft. They actually dented the, uh, <laughs> they dented the manifold to put it around the steering shaft and you're like, oh, this is an awesome kit. So what happens when you um, go do a one, two, I go, uh, give me a three, four or a two, three. And you go, what? And two, three. Ah, jeez, I used the wrong one. <laughs> let's keep it in there. So let's, I say, give me a two, three, give me a two, three, four shift. Okay. Got you, Alex. Boom. Boom. Okay. And what does the knock sensor do on one of those kits? It goes. Knock sensors at nine plus. And then it tries to add it, but then when it jostles the engine, oh my Lord. And I go, okay, we gotta have a talk. 
This is not acceptable. So, I can, what fuel are you running? Oh, I'm running pump gas. <laughs> okay, well, you're fucked because I, I have to go by what I'm seeing in the data log and I can't trust that that's only false because it's so severe that I can't ignore it. So I'm gonna tell you, okay, what are we gonna do, brother? Are we gonna ignore the knock sensors or are you gonna have to go through your On3 or Vortec or Pro Charger kit and figure out why the knock sensors are going apeshit? Check your exhaust, check your uh, everything. And they're like, oh, okay. So let's say they do come back and they give me the exact same, uh, exact same gas, exact same everything. They just go and move some charge pipes out of the way and they think they fix it. Alex, I got it. I got it. I gave you another two, three data log and uh, I, think, I think I licked it. It's good and uh, you should be good to go. Okay, cool. Then I see it and the knock sensors are still pissed off, but maybe a little less. You know, add it and then they fucking hate life. Sometimes they do that. I go, well, what are we going to do? So I say, let's get Octane Booster in there. And the Octane Booster brings back the same result. That means you have false knock because you had 100 Octane in there. So I have to do, I have to, I have to talk to you. I have to go, do we desensitize them? What do we do? Or do you live with eight degrees of timing at what? Because the knock sensors kick back, you know, five or six. And you're like, ah. Oh. So what can we do to remedy this? I go, well, the only way I would desensitize anything is with your permission, knowing exactly what could happen and with high octane in the tank. Because I know in my mind, 10 pounds of boost, this is not, this is not gonna uh, uh, generally uh, explode the car with 100 octane in it. So we say, well, we can desensitize them. So desensitizing them only with your permission, knowing what can happen and disclaiming what can happen, would I be somewhat comfortable desensitize the knock sensors because you decided to get a centrifugal on three or pro charger setup that has char charge pipes flowing through the sucker. And now I have to ignore or modify the knock sensor settings when I generally don't have to. On a TVS car, 12 pounds of boost, two, three shift. Dang it, I keep using the wrong marker. Um, on the two, three shift TVS or Whipple or even Edelbrock, what I see is this. Okay, knock sensors, pump gas, 10 psi. Woo, woo, woo! They're adding, they're, they're adding timing the whole time. They're never positive if they have good octane in them. Why is that? Because the blower sitting on top of the car, on top of the heads, to, and the calibration we use basically takes that into account. It takes into account that you're going to have rotors whipping on top of the of the car of the of the engine, potentially causing a buzzing effect and then we say well that might be the blower but generally if the knock sensors are happy at 10 psi without any modification to the knock sensor i don't have to do anything nitrous <laughs> is funny too nitrous to me should be always used with a high octane fuel no you cannot use e85 in the, in the auxiliary tank and pump gas in the main fuel, you have to have similar stoic fuel to run nitrous. But nitrous logs are actually even funnier. Nitrous logs generally look like this. This is what happens when a solenoid is mounted on a throttle body really close to the knock sensors. The knock sensors are in the valley, okay? Not 956, but what I'm saying is in the valley of the engine, not the puro pinche 956. So I say, give me a watt log. And I say, in the watt log, make sure that you go watt at 3,000, activate the nitrous at 3,800, let the nitrous off at 7,000, and end the run at 7,500. That's what I say. And wouldn't you know it, I'm pump gas and about 100 shot, the sucker does this. <laughs> and then, and they're like, hey, that didn't feel that good. Well, no shit, it didn't feel that good. The solenoids being mounted somewhere really close to the uh, throttle body or like a hard mount and you activate 1000 PSI of nitrous and whatever PSI of fuel at the solenoid near the uh, knock sensors and it goes <laughs> knock sensors hate life. 
So I said, let me ask you a question. Are you willing to run E85 as a main fuel? And if you have an auxiliary tank or if you're drawing it from the same, yes, I'm willing to do that. All of a sudden, I can desensitize the knock sensor or I say, let's try, before I do that, before I suggest a higher octane fuel, I say, let's activate it later. Let's activate the nitrous at 4,000. And wouldn't you know it, sometimes I've seen the knock sensors be happy at 4,000 and not really interrupt. So that's when I say, well, you can do this. You can act, because people want to activate it right off of idle, apparently. Let's activate it later or get you high octane fuel if you want to activate it at 3,800 and we can desensitize an knock sensor with your permission, knowing that because you mounted the, the solenoids near the throttle body and it could be causing buzzing that the knock sensors think is detonation or knock sensor uh, hits the right hits the right frequency then we can just ignore that and we can just either hit them later because with higher rpm the frequency changes and it looks for a different frequency than with uh let's say anything under a certain rpm so hopefully this helps you guys figure out what false knock could look like what knock could be caused by um the difference between a uh, knock on a pd blower and a centrifugal or a turbo application that has a bunch of charge pipes all over the place um, and with nitrous activation mounting the solenoid near the throttle body. This is a lot of fun. This is the number three. So I can put this on a video. This is a uh, number three whiteboard series. So we'll keep this going if you guys like the videos. Thanks for listening, guys. We will talk to you later.